Yes, I represent Renishaw PLC. Um, if you haven't heard of us before, we're a global company with expertise in motion control, precision uh, machining, spectroscopy, dental, medical technology. Um, but Renishaw took over Measurement Devices Limited uh, two or three years ago, my old company, MDL. And as MDL, we've been involved in the quarrying industry for about 30 years um, with regards to our laser measuring technology. And originally this was designed for use positioning um, oil rigs in the North Sea, but in the mid 80s, it was seen that there was some potential to bring this measurement technology into quarries um, to use profiling the rock face prior to a blast. And since then it's become um, it's bread and butter in the UK quarrying industry to do this profiling. Um, of course, we work all the way around the world and the take up of the technology and standards and attitudes generally vary greatly um, around the world. The point of this presentation really is just to stress the importance of the survey as an integral part of the fragmentation process and also um, to point out the although safety is the main reason why it's been um, there's been such uptake of the technology on quarries there are very significant cost savings to be had as well um, when you employ the survey as part of a optimized um, fragmentation methodology this kit is very familiar to many of you I'm sure but assuming that people are from all different sides of the industry. It's just a quick overview of, of what we're talking about here. This is a quarryman laser scanner and we're using infrared lasers aiming at the rock face, shoot the laser, we get a return back and that gives us a data point on the rock face. And when we've got enough data points, we build up a 3D model of the rock face. Um, over the decades, the technology has changed significantly from old units that you had to manually point and take single shots to the kit that we've got displayed uh, over the back here, um, which will collect thousands of points in a, in a few minutes. And in conjunction with the face profiling equipment, um, there's also borehole deviation measurement tools, the bore track, which will give you information about the, the drill holes. And the other part of this profiling package is the software that both of these bits of hardware will download to. So this software allows you to view the data, to analyze the burdens and to design the uh, layout of the shot holes. And again, very familiar to many of you, I'm sure, but just uh, for those of you who haven't seen this before, uh, it should be an animation. I was advised not to use animations in my PowerPoints. This should be moving. So effectively, we've got a very small face here with a, um, a 3D model of a, of a rock face, which was collected by the quarryman. Um, as well as the model of the face, the quarryman, the scanner, will also pick up um, the proposed shot hole location, so the red marks that you can see at the top of the face there. And once you've got that information in the software, you can use the tools to adjust the position of the collars, to adjust the inclination of the holes, the depth, the angle that they're being drilled at. And as you're doing that, you'll see on the right hand side here, a map of the face. And at each point across the face, you'll get a burden. So as you're adjusting the collars and the angles, the burdens will change. And as they do, you can make sure that you've optimized your, your whole layout. In addition to this, once you've done the design, you can export reports to the driller so the driller has the correct information to work on. Um, once the holes are drilled, you can then use a borehole deviation device to uh, measure the holes, bring that data into the software, and then you've got to look at your as-built data, the relationship of the face to the holes. You can do other things, measure volumes, drape photographs over the face, this kind of thing. So, of course, the main um, motivation for the take-up of this technology and its introduction in the first place was safety. 
the more information you have about the geometry of the face and the relationship of the face to the holes, then the more control you can get over the whole fragmentation process. And for that reason, of course, profiling has become uh, absolutely standard uh, in the UK. Um, beyond this, um, of course, it's not just safety, though there is cost implications to making sure that you have this information before you carry out your fragmentation. And these benefits are, are much discussed and well known, but rarely are actual values put on the improvements and the benefits that can be introduced when this is done correctly and thoroughly. So with that in mind, this is a case study from Lafarge, which we've had some involvement in. Um, Lafarge have been a customer of ours for many years, and particularly in the last couple of years, we've been involved in this program, so we've had a particularly close relationship. Um, of course, there was the merger in the summer with Holcim, but these figures all relate to pre-merger Lafarge. Um, the, the thrust of this was that um, Lafarge wanted to optimize their fragmentation process with safety as one concern and cost savings as another. Um, again, there was a question about well, what are the cost savings you can have? Um, is there any way of measuring them? And so a preliminary analysis was done. Um, this covers the cements and aggregates businesses. And the, the total cost of fragmentation at that point was about 200 million euros. So it was an attempt to tackle these costs or to try and make an impact on them. Um, with two kind of two pronged attack really. One was a global sourcing initiative to look at procurement. Um, the other one was a pilot, a series of pilots across a few sites globally uh, to try and um, implement operational best practices. This was led by Xavier Thrin, who's the VP of Mineral Resources and Mining at um, Lafarge, from whom some of these um, slides uh, have come. So the, um, the initiative covered the whole fragmentation process from the design, the planning, drilling, the explosives, blasting, all the way through. Um, the aim was to put in place measures and operational procedures to try and optimize all these stages. Uh, Lafarge understood at this point when, when this initiative was kicked off two or three years ago that um, fragmentation performance was declining somewhat um, for a number of reasons. There was a lack of internal competence and, and training. Um, there were questions about the control of subcontractors. Is it just a case of getting the cheapest bid and therefore ending up with the worst results? Is anyone auditing the work of the subcontractors and making sure that their methodology is correct and meets company standards? And then also there was a question about management focus. Again. Everybody knows about the benefits of optimizing your fragmentation process, but these things are much talked about. But you go on site, is anyone actually doing anything about them? The, the benefits can perhaps be seen to be abstract, um, whereas the measures that you have to take are very concrete and involve training and changes in your practices and routines. So Lafarge formed this worldwide blast optimization team to, to promote this initiative around their sites. And three driving forces, um, safety of course was the number one, the cost throughout the whole process and also looking at the environment and community relations. You might be working within your local legislation requirements but you still get um, complaints about noise, air blast, um, vibration, reapplying for permits. So the community relations are, are very important. And so the plan was to put in place some company-wide safety and environmental best practices. And in terms of costs, these are the kind of costs that um, uh, are involved. And of course, familiar stuff, but um, again, much known about, but uh, does anyone do anything about these things on site? At the top here, you've got the basic direct costs of fragmentation. So costs of explosive, the costs of drilling the holes, subcontractor costs, transport costs. But the bit that we're interested in from uh, our 
point of view from Renishaw and our equipment is the the second half of this the cost of non cost of poor quality fragmentation what are the consequences of not optimizing it and what are the resulting costs so the 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 points in the orange boxes these are kind of the non-negotiable points these are the the rules of the game so to speak so these are the safety issues avoiding fly rock and the environmental issues vibrations air blast and so on but amongst those are all the other costs that arise from poor quality fragmentation so um, oversized rock in the crusher oversized set aside uh, cost of secondary breakage um, crusher maybe expecting 1,000 tonnes per hour, you're getting 850 as a cost. Fines, you've got the same fixed costs, but you end up with a product that's worthless. Back break, predominantly a safety issue, but also affects productivity. Um, floor control, mentioned in the previous um, presentation, you go to quarries around the world and you have to negotiate horrific roller coasters as you get around the quarry and this has an impact on fuel costs of transport, of um, wear on tyres, uh, maintenance on uh, plant and so on. So these are the costs that we're looking to tackle. And Lafarge, we're looking at two, two prongs. So one dealing with the direct um, costs of fragmentation. So looking at sourcing and looking at subcontractor policy. Um, but also in terms of the poor quality fragmentation, looking at blast optimization, putting in place operating practices and looking at the competence and training of, of staff. There were no common standards across Lafarge and in a company that big operating in so many locations that means you've got a huge variation in standards and safety levels and your results. So these are the kind of best practices that, um, that Lafarge were going through at this time. So first of all, trying to identify experts, whether they be within Lafarge or external suppliers and companies, um, setting up blast optimization teams to work in country and on site. And these teams would be monitoring um, performance indicators, so making sure that there were actually concrete measures of performance changes. Um, implementing standard operating procedures across the company and also monitoring and auditing the um, subcontractors and their work on site. And then very importantly, it was a question of rolling out proper training for all the staff so that all this is going to be implemented correctly by, by the staff, putting in place training programs and competence uh, programs. And so from our point of view as Renishaw with our profiling kit, um, we were one of the experts, one of the um, preferred suppliers that have worked with Lafarge to try and roll out standard and appropriate equipment throughout all their sites. So initially we were looking at pilot sites, a number of sites, UK and France, Ukraine, Poland and so on. And we visited sites and we've been involved in training key personnel at Lafarge. And the idea is that this training is continuous and it has to be very relevant and has to be made sure that this training rolls down from group level to country level to site level. Its profiling equipment is very simple to use but it's also possible to get bad results if the staff aren't trained properly. If you're bringing together um, face profiling data and data from whole deviation measurement tools it's possible to get this relationship wrong when you bring them together. And if you do that, everything that follows on from that will be wrong. All, all your relationships between the holes and the face, the burden measurements will all be wrong. So the training of the staff has been absolutely crucial. And what are we involved in? We're involved in measuring these blast design parameters. So these are the kind of things that people learn about on their first day of training in quarrying apprenticeship school. These parameters, the drill angles, the depths, the bench heights, and so on. Everyone knows about these things, and you go to a quarry in China, they can all discuss them and talk about them. The question is, are they being measured? Are they being designed properly? 
do the guys on site have the tools to measure them? Do they have the training to use those tools? Are the tools maintained? Are they in good condition? And what it boils down to, you can't control what you don't measure. If you don't measure this stuff properly, if you don't design it properly, um, you've started out on the wrong foot immediately for the whole fragmentation process. So what we try and emphasize to users and potential users and what the Farge have also latched onto is the importance of understanding that surveying is the first step in this manufacturing process. If you get the survey wrong at the start, every single thing that follows on from that is, is wrong. Everything is wrong. You can't control what you don't measure and any designs or planning will be useless if it's not based on accurate surveys carried out with the correct equipment and with the trained operators. And so what we're trying to do, of course, is to measure the burden. That's ultimately what we're trying to get to, the burden all the way down the hull and all across the face. Initially, it's the burden between the rock face and the proposed hull. And, and um, if you don't understand this properly, you'll get all the problems and costs that I showed in the previous slide. If you uh, underestimate the burden, you'll get um, oversized rock vibration. You overestimate it and you'll get fly rock fines and, and all the other problems. Beyond this, once you've designed your hole with the proposed locations, it's a question of exporting that information to the driller. And then, is this driller's work audited? Is it checked? A lot of quarries will will work with a quarryman or a face profiler and you'll get information about the face, but beyond that, the holes and their relationship with the face, you'll be relying on information from the driller and relying on them to do the job properly. But again, sites around the world different levels of experience of the driller, different choices of equipment can lead to big problems. So is the driller's work being checked? If you have a borehole deviation tool, you can actually check what has been drilled and you can get proper as-built data. Sometimes if a, a quarry hasn't been using this, this kind of technology, they'll get a nasty surprise when, when it's introduced. And of course, this is the kind of problems that you get if, if the drilling is wrong. So everything from the whole collar being in the wrong place at the start to the wrong depth, the wrong angles, deviation. And where you're in sites where there's very high benches, you can easily get a meter or two at the bottom of, of error if, if all this is wrong. And again, in the UK, good procedures relatively, the, the equipment take up is good, but even there you can get big problems. I'm going back to the start of the survey, the collar position. Um, usually we have a guy stood over the collar with a target and the quarryman will shoot to the target. You can be very, very careful that you're getting exactly over the collar, but if you've got a three metre target that's bent and the target is actually over here, you've immediately got half a metre error or more in the collar position. Again, beyond that point, everything that follows is wrong if your survey is wrong. And further beyond that, the loading plan, the software can export um, the loading plan. It can't help you make the plan, but it can record it and then deliver it to the staff from the quarry. Is this plan being checked? Is it being validated and audited? Lafarge's uh, optimization team were checking every stage of this uh, fragmentation process um, as part of their procedures. And what has been very important for Lafarge is that any changes have been measured. What is their impact on the quarry? What is their impact on production? So before and after any changes implemented, actual concrete metrics will be uh, established by the blast optimization teams. So we're looking at things like um, the blasting cost per tonne, the drilling cost per tonne, oversized rock, um, energy consumption of vehicles, energy consumption of the, the crusher, and tonnage uh, fines and so on. These are concrete measures. Without these, you're just guessing. It's all guesswork and it's finger in the air. Have, have you made improvements or not? And so as a result of all these um, uh, measurements and uh, blast optimization teams, Lafarge were able to give concrete results from the initial pilot site. So this is a couple of results from Poland and Russia and on these sites, first year savings, 
They were looking at a 15% reduction in powder factor, 8% reduction in drilling cost per meter, 3% reduction in oversize, up to 50 tonnes per hour increased plant, plant throughput. And overall, a much better control over the quarry floor, over the quarry face, and a safer, more efficient work environment. And across the pilot sites as a whole, the Farge measured a four euro cents per tonne saving, um, which extended across the whole aggregates and cement um, operations, looking at about 10 million euros uh, saving across the fragmentation process. And this is not through any kind of revolutionary technology or massive changes, but it's just putting into place things that everybody knows they should be doing on site. Um, um, so beyond this, um, Lafarge are looking at accelerating this rollout across all their sites um, and continually reviewing um, the indicators and performance and so on. And from our point of view at Renishaw, um, again, we're working with Lafarge, but also other companies around the world. And the point is just to stress, again, the importance of accurate survey at the start of this fragmentation process and how much impact this can have on the whole the process and the importance of your staff being properly trained and monitored um, and ultimately you can't control what you don't measure is the, is the message okay